March 2020, there's a worldwide pandemic. We are all stuck indoors, practicing social distancing and in quarantine, and I have found myself with way too much free time than I usually do. So I've decided to make a dev blog. We were planning on keeping it all hush hush and a secret, but since we're facing the next apocalypse and we might all die from starvation or from COVID or we might all eat each other, I was thinking, okay. But first, introductions. My name is Steven and I'm the founder of a two-man company from Calgary, Canada called Isto Inc. Isto is the name after the tallest mountain in the Brooks Range in Alaska because I love mountains and I love hiking. But I'm a lot more passionate about making games. We've been making games since 2014 and previously released a game called Disjoint on the mobile app store. And now we are working on our newest game called Atrio. Now, aside from the end of the world inspiring me to start this vlog, I want to share with you our progress of making this game in hopes that you can learn something or at least find the motivation and inspiration to help you with the game you're working on. So now let's dive in. Atrio is a survival automation based game. The idea is you're trapped in this world of darkness and the only thing keeping the lights on is this power source called the heart box. The idea is you have to fuel the heart box by gathering resources and putting it into the heart box. And the more you upgrade it, the larger the light radius grows. And the more the light radius grows, the more world space you have to actually travel around the world and gather resources and safety. But there's a catch. There's actually a limit to the amount of resources you can gather on your own, so you have to turn to automation to gather it yourself. So we give you all these tools to build these amazing automation systems. You got conveyor belts and giant springboards and you got stuff, you know, bouncing around and making all this crazy, cool, organic, systemic gameplay. You can light deer on fire and they'll turn into meat. And the idea is you can really put yourself into the game and customize it to make your own gameplay. The one thing that's really cool about the game, we're hoping, is all the creatures actually play a role in your automation system. So you can capture creatures that are in the world and put them into your lines. For example, these guys are called the mini deer. And what they do is they eat organic material and poop out new organic material, the same way spiders make silk. We got a whole bunch of creatures planned and we're really hoping that this will be something unique and super fun to play. Now we've actually been working on this game for two whole years already, but I'm not gonna show you what we have right now because we're gonna be stuck indoors for a long time and I gotta milk that content for as much as possible. So instead, we're gonna start all the way back to the beginning in 2018 and cover the first six months of development. It's February, 2018. And before we start writing any code, we have to pick the right game. Because we're doing this full time, our livelihoods depend on the game being a commercial success. So we have to pick right. The first thing we need to do is decide on main criteria to find a successful game. And we came up with four. One, the game has to be doable. Two, the game has to have a sexy, unique art style. Three, the game has to be unique. And four, the market has to want our game. So let's dive into the first one. Every year, Steam puts out a top sellers list of all the games from that year and categorizes them by platinum, gold, silver, and bronze based on how well they sell. We wanted to identify the trends on what genres are selling well and predict which genres would be selling well in three years when our game was done. So I compiled a list of all the games into a nice chart and you can see a distinct trend. Strategy, Simulation, Survival, and Base Builders were selling great in both 2016 and in 2017. And that's how we came up with Atrio. We found a nice mix between two genres, Automation meets Survival. And now it's March, the prototype phase. And this is all about showing off the potential of the game. So we got mining working because it's a really important part of our game. More importantly, we want to show off a Rube Goldberg type machine with crazy zany contraptions. So we put down this mouse trap that launches the mouse into the air and bounces it along until it lands into this metal contraption like a trap. The trap is then pulled by a magnet onto these timers and then the mouse is launched into the air and set on fire and then turns into a piece of meat. And with that, we felt like we had enough potential in the game and we're feeling good. Now it's April and it's concept art time. Once we've proven the concept and are feeling good, I start to piece together concept art. 
A strong art style can really sell the game, so we have to nail it. It has to look different, it has to stand out. We decided to go with a 2.5D style, mostly because I don't know 3D, but we like to pretend it's because it's the only way to achieve a unique art style. I wanted it to look sharp, and I didn't want any blended colors. You'll notice the first five attempts were pretty off the mark, but I just kept going and narrowing down what I wanted by pulling pieces I liked into the next piece. And eventually, we landed on our style. Once we did, we started toying with the idea of giants in the world. These gargantuan, monolithic creatures that are left over from some kind of prehistoric world. Kind of like the statues in the Lord of the Rings that the player passes by. It really brought in this sense of mystery and scale into the world. And with that, I was feeling good with the visuals and it was time to move on. To June. And in June, we now have our first real prototype. At this point, the code in the original prototype has been scrapped. We really duct taped together a ton of stuff just to proof out a concept. It wasn't robust or scalable. A lot of the visuals were faked, and for a three year project, the foundation has to be strong. So we built everything with scalability and robustness in mind which usually takes a lot more time, but it pays off in the end. And here's what we have. The first thing you'll notice is our horrendous character animation. Animation is way out of my wheelhouse and I've actually never done it before. And since there's only two of us and somebody has to do it, I took a stab. I actually tried rotoscoping my friend Alex, but it really didn't work out the way I wanted it to. You can see that he's running and here is our result. Not the best, but that's okay. You'll also notice there's a gorgeous UI that looks suspiciously like Don't Starve. We also have harvesting. It's incredibly simple, but what we are seeing is all the work I've put in to make the system scalable and robust. We also have a super basic heart box that takes in items and, well, doesn't do anything yet. And that's about it. Not a whole hell of a lot, but like I said, we've built a strong foundation to move forward straight into August. And now we are at the finish line, the end of the video, month six. Things have really gotten a lot better. We have a brand new title screen with some art that's super sexy. And the first thing you will notice when we start this game is our character still looks janky as hell. We are deciding right in August that we need to hire a new animator. So the next video will feature brand new spanking sexy animations. If there is a next video, if we haven't eaten each other already. And hey look, we have item equipment. We have placeable items. If you look up at the top, all of the items in that menu section are working, including a fire grill, which lets you set rocks on fire and turns it into new elements. We have a proximity mine, which blows stuff up, including hounds that are trying to kill you. We have an ore harvester that lets you mine rocks, a springboard, which in the previous videos launches stuff, and a grav pipe conveyor belt, which moves items along in the most basic way. You'll also notice we have X and Y buttons. Part of what we really wanted to do and make a priority in this game was to be able to play Atrio on consoles. So it turns out designing for a controller is a total bitch. If you wanna bring controllers into your game, or at least controller support, I would highly recommend as a tip from our lessons learned to start designing with controller in mind especially for the UI. What we've learned is moving from a controller designed UI to a keyboard and mouse is way easier than going back. So for this round, we implemented the entire demo to work with controllers. And now we have an assembly line that you can build. And lastly, we have creatures. They aren't doing a whole hell of a lot and they sure aren't glamorous, but our little mini deer can run away from you. We also have our hounds, which will charge you when you enter into their territory. If you drop a proximity mine on them while they charge you, you'll temporarily stun them and you can't do much with them. But in future builds, we should be able to drag them around when they're stunned and capture them. The last thing that is kind of a glitch is the super broken dodge animation that lets you zip around the map at lightning speed. 
Sadly, probably the most fun part about this demo, but that's okay. And that's it. Six months of work in a nutshell. And that's it. Six months of work wrapped up nicely in a nutshell. And if you're wondering, yes, the game does get a lot better. But you'll have to wait until the next video to see how we improve it. And let's be real, I'm not going anywhere and you're not going anywhere, so you may as well subscribe to see our next video. And if you're wondering about the intro and what was going on with that, we're out of time, but I'll cover it in the next one. Peace.